for one week, I'm going to give up my nice, fast, powerful NEMA 1450 adapter. This thing charges the car at about 30 miles an hour, uh, but the car doesn't come with this anymore. And there's a lot of people who don't have this option at home and they have to charge with the NEMA 515 that comes with the car, just a standard wall outlet. So this little guy charges the car at about five miles per hour. I have a 70 mile round trip to work every day. So can I survive with just this? Now I have the luxury of being able to charge my car if I charge right when I get home, right until when I leave for about 12 hours. Uh, in that time, I would get somewhere around 60 miles of range if everything is perfect. Um, so long term, I wouldn't be able to survive off of this just going to work. Now, of course, I'll have the weekends and things like that to build up some extra charge, but I'm going to see if this is viable for me. Now, luckily, the adapter uh, for the NEMA 1450 or any of the bigger plugs are available on Tesla's website for only 35 bucks, um, but you also have to have the plug available. So luckily, I have a NEMA 1450. Uh, we built this house not long ago, and I was planning on getting a Tesla at that time. So I had the electricians install it, expecting to charge an electric car on it. And you can also use that outlet for a few other things. And I figured, you know, rather than spending all that money on a wall charger that can only charge my Tesla, now I have a big plug in my garage I could use for other things just in case I needed it. So during this week, I'll just be checking in, letting you know how it's going, if I'm worried about my range, uh, anything like that, if I think I'm going to make it throughout the week. So this morning, I actually did charge to 100% as kind of my final thing for the other video I did about battery calibration. So I do have a little more charge starting off today than I normally would. I'm at about 230 miles or so. I don't remember exactly. And normally I get home with closer to 150. I normally charge to 80% every day. I'm going to keep charging to 80% every day. I'm not going to charge to 90. So this is Tesla challenge number seven. I'm going to see if I can survive with a normal wall outlet. So let's switch this out. Okay, so you can see off to the right, that's my NEMA 1450 uh, plug over there. Uh, this is the adapter attached to the wall charger. So normally I have it plugged in there and I have my cables hung up. And when you want to change this adapter, all you do is pull this out. Take whatever plug you want and you can just plug it in there. So now my Tesla charger is ready to go into a normal wall outlet. I am really not looking forward to doing this. <laughs> okay, so let's plug this in. You can see the Tesla light is illuminating. So we have power, that's working fine. It's a little ugly, but it's temporary, so I'll leave it like that. So going from normal wall outlet. We are charging. And here we are, our max of 12 amps. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Uh, but this is a great idea because a lot of people have to charge this way uh, and, you know, they really have no choice. So why are we charging at one mile an hour? I don't like that at all. So I have a look here. This is flowing. That means the charging is working. Energy is going into the car. This is still blinking. Oh, I remember. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I, I remember why this isn't working. So right now the air is on. And that plug is not big enough to move much charge. So if I turn the air off, now you can see the miles per hour going up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so not used to that because when you plug into the 1450, you can have the car on doing whatever and you'll still get a charge. So this charge is so slow, you cannot have the air conditioning or the heating on or the battery is not going to charge. You're just pulling energy from the wall to go directly to your heating and cooling. Yep. So turn the air back on. We immediately lose all our charge. Turn it back off and it goes back up. Oh boy, this is going to be a pain. Wish me luck. Uh, we'll see. You know, I highly recommend uh, a few things when people are thinking about buying a Tesla. Have charging at home. Have something faster than this. This is fine if it's all you have. It'll work. But as you can see already, it's it's kind of a pain. Um, so it's, it's going to take a few hours to get even to my 80% just from here. This is Tesla challenge number seven. For this challenge, I'm going to drive as I normally do. I'm going to use the car like I normally do uh, to see if I can just act like I normally would, use the car without, you know, trying to hypermile or anything, and survive with just this smaller outlet. Now, I don't have my aero caps on right now. You can see right there. <laughs> They're hanging on the wall. Um, I may put those on at some point, but I'm planning on doing that anyway for winter. Um, so those might go on and, you know, to help me a little bit with my range. I'm pretty interested. I see a lot of people that buy this car and then they're like, oh, I live in an apartment, I can't charge, or I can only use a standard wall outlet. 
And I don't know, for me, I drive a ton, so it's, it's really not an option long term. Um, but I'm interested to see if I can survive one week. Uh, and this might give you an idea of what it's like if you're going to buy a Tesla and you're going to only have the standard wall outlet or really any electric car. Um, this one takes takes longer because the battery is bigger than anything else. Um, but but this should give you a pretty good idea. And here's the screen. It's going to take me almost four hours. I mean, look at this bar. It barely has to move. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh, I do not have a good feeling about this. All right, so day one obviously started with my 80% charge. The car was able to fully charge. I have 235 miles left. Uh, you know, theoretically, it's going to be really close because I drive about 70 miles a day. I have time to charge for about 65 miles a day. Um, but you never know. Maybe some drives will be more efficient or whatever. So we'll see how it goes over the next few days. So I'm going to continue driving like I normally would. Same speed and everything. I'm not going to try to draft cars or anything like that. But I'm going to be honest, it is definitely on my mind um, the fact that I'm using that smaller plug and that my charging rate is so slow. Um, so just, just put it out there. I mean, it's something I'm thinking about. And I have to actively be like, no, no, no. You're going to continue driving normally. You're not going to treat this car uh, special in any way. So I know I said I'm not going to change my habits, but I've already changed them just a tiny bit. Um, I set my cruise to the same speed and everything, uh, but my accelerations are a bit slower. Um, I'm actually like getting a bit nervous about this. Uh, it's not a big deal. If I need to, I'll just switch back uh, and then I'll have failed. You know, I didn't really set any rules for this challenge, but I guess I was challenging myself to use the 515 plug for a week. And if I can't do it, then I guess it's failed. You know, if you're only driving like 10 miles a day or something, then this, of course, is not a big deal. Um, or if you have charging at work or things like that. But for me, I drive a lot. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that drive a lot. And that's why they buy these cars, right? Because this is a great car to drive a lot. You save on fuel. It's more comfortable. It's less stressful with autopilot. And a lot of people are going to be in this situation where they pick up the car and they're like, oh, I'm going to get that plug installed later or whatever. Um, well, at least for day one, I'm going to be like, don't wait. Um, so, all right. I'm going to plug in and let's see how long it's going to take us uh, to get to 80%. I don't know if it'll even be done by tomorrow morning. Another piece of this that's a negative for this plug is this is actually more expensive for me to charge. So I'm using the same amount of energy, but the 515 plug is less efficient. So the amount of energy you need to charge your battery, you actually have to use more to get the same amount of charge than the amount of electricity you use on the NEMA 1450. So this is actually going to cost me more in electricity for this week uh, for the same amount of charging than if I was using the bigger plug. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you're kind of debating between which plug you want to get. The bigger plug you get, the more efficient it is. Just getting home, day one, and I'm already a little nervous. <laughs> I started the day uh, at 240 miles. Now we're at 163. You can see I used almost 80 miles. I only drove 71 miles. Um, so, you know, idling in the parking lot at work and stuff like that. I don't usually use sentry mode at work, but I do have cabin overheat protection on, uh, non-AC, just the fan. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a tough week. Uh, my charge limit is 80%, um, and it's 5.44 PM. I don't start charging until 7 PM because that's when my rates go down for my electricity. It's 16 hours and 20 minutes to get back to where I was. And if it starts charging at 7 PM, I only have 12 to 13 hours, depending on when I leave for work, of charging. So that means every day I can't make it back to where I was. Um, but I'm going to put my air caps on and I'm going to see if I can make this work. I, I'm not going to give up. All right, last thing for today, I'll put up, uh, this is my Teslify data for on the way home. Uh, just for myself, it's September 17th, uh, the drive home. That's the data I want to put up. Um, and you can see this drive wasn't even inefficient or anything. It's not like it was super cold or there was a lot of headwind. Uh, I wasn't using the climate like crazy. It was just kind of gently set. Um, so it's not like I could drastically change my driving style anyway to gain a lot of efficiency. Um, so of course I could maybe try chill mode and things like that. I'm going to hold off as long as I can. Um, if it comes to it though, I will start changing my driving habits, changing settings in the car to see if we can make this work. All right, it's the morning of day two. I got the aero caps on, put those on last night. And there's still four and a half hours until this car is done charging. But we're gonna make this work. All right, so I'm home, it's day two. I have 148 miles left, uh, but to make it the rest of the week, I have to go 210 miles. So let's see how long this next charge is gonna take. So like always, I have my charging scheduled. If we turn that off, and let it calculate. 
It says it's going to take 18 hours. So, you know, at this rate, I'm never going to get full again. You know, I wonder. Stephanie. Baby. If I get stranded because I'm using this stupid little plug and don't have enough charge to get home, will you pick me up? Can you get an Uber? So I'll obviously make it tomorrow. I'll have no problem with that. But then another two days is going to be like 140 miles. So I guess I'll be ready to call Tesla roadside assistance uh, if I need a tow. All right, so this is a bit weird. <laughs> you can see I'm now all decked out in winter clothes. Uh, you can see back here, my NEMA 1450 plug is back in the wall. And I don't even remember what I said in the last parts of this video because it was months ago. Um, I was trying to use uh, the NEMA 515. So just like over here, ignore my, all my junk, but right, oh, I hate doing this. Uh, right there, normal wall outlet. I was trying to use that instead of using this NEMA 1450, which the smaller plug gets me a charging rate about five miles an hour. This big plug gets me a charging rate about 30 miles an hour. And I was trying to see if I can survive with that smaller plug. And the answer is absolutely not. So back when I was doing this video, if I was just going to work and doing nothing else, I would get by, uh, especially getting to charge on the weekends. So I was trying to do that for a week. And on day, I don't know, three or four, whatever day it was, I actually, that's when I got to film the version 10, the early release. I had to plug in because I had to do some extra driving to go check that out with him. And so the challenge like absolutely was a fail. Um, but I just didn't have time to film anything then, and I've just been filming other stuff. So I'm finally getting back to this months later. So while filming that part is when I put my aero caps on. So you'll see in my videos, I don't really talk about it, but I go from having no aero caps on my wheels to having the aero caps on. And that's why. Because for that challenge, I put the aero caps on to help uh, get a little more range out of my car. The other thing I'm now realizing is when I was filming that, it was in the 70s, and I didn't have any range loss from the temperature. Well now in the winter, oh my gosh, there's no way I could use a standard wall plug to do what I needed to do. Even today, my car right now is sitting at like 50 miles of range because I had to do a ton of driving today, uh, and I came home and plugged in, and it's not charging yet. I'm waiting for my cheaper electricity in uh, an hour or so to kick in for it to start charging, um, but there is no way I would ever be able to use a standard wall plug in the winter. Um, so this challenge was a total fail uh, for the car and for me. Uh, I personally would never be able to charge off a wall outlet. Now for you, can you use a wall outlet? Well, of course it just depends on what kind of driving you're doing. If you're only going, you know, 10 or 20 miles a day, of course, it, it's, it's plenty to just charge on that slower charger. But if anything comes up, you know, if you have to do a lot of driving in a day, and then the next day you have to do a lot of driving. It's just, I wouldn't want to be stuck relying on superchargers or outside charging or anything like that. Depending on where you are, depending on where you live, a NEMA 1450 install is probably not all that expensive. So you should probably get some quotes just to see how much it is. Even getting a Tesla wall charger, uh, you know, the expensive part of that is buying the wall charger. The cost of an install from an electrician on that, I don't think would really be all that different from a NEMA 1450, um, but I went with the 1450 for two reasons. One, uh, I wasn't even sure when I put that in I was getting the Tesla, but I was really hoping and I wanted to be ready. And you can also use a NEMA 1450 for other things. I kind of wanted the versatility. I didn't want to be stuck with only the Tesla charger. And as EVs become more prominent, if we ever sell the house and somebody has an EV that's not a Tesla, a wall charger is not going to help them, but a NEMA 1450 definitely will. So overall, for me, definitely NEMA 1450, no, no wall outlet. I probably will never use that again uh, unless... You know, I'm in a pinch or I'm somewhere where the car is going to be parked for a while. Let me know what you think of this video. Uh, if you think I need to do any other charging related challenges, because that is a big part of owning an EV is keeping it charged and having enough charge to get through your daily life and not really worry about it. With the NEMA 1450, I'm driving 70 miles a day minimum, uh, if not double that some days. And I never think about it. I drive all over the place. Like I said, I have 50 miles of range left and I guess I was thinking about it on the way home, but I knew I was getting home you know, with that 50 or 60 miles left. And I wasn't worried at any point. I just know that tomorrow the car will be full and ready to do it all again. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you liked the video, hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And I will see you in the next video.